Please pause this video and try the problem on your own. Let's read the problem together. Which domain, so let's, let's stop and pause there for a second, domain and range. Domain and range in functions refer to the inputs and outputs of a function. Domain is input, range is outputs. Um, in a simpler sense or more general sense, I guess an algebraic sense, domain is usually reserved for x and range is usually reserved for y or f of x. On a graph, that would mean, so we have a graph, since uh, domain refers to x typically and range refers to y, that means that the x value of a coordinate or an x value um, on a graph refers to your domain, right? And the y values of the points in your graph or whatever, or y values of points refer to the range. So there's lots of ways to think about this. Here they're saying what domain would be appropriate for a function, right? A function to a relationship where every input has one output, predicts the number of household online devices, right? In terms of the number of people in the household. So look at the phrasing here. We're saying predicts the number of household online devices in terms of. In terms of means based on, or in other words, dependent on. Or in other words, um, this tells you that the number of people are the independent, independent variable, the domain. Domain is, is independent variable as well, as you would say in science here. So here, the domain happens to be the number of people. And the range is the number of online devices. All right, so our function is telling you, okay, how many people are in the house? How is the relationship between that number and the number of online devices? And there probably will be, right? Generally, the more people that are in the house, probably the more online de devices there would be, unless for some reason someone doesn't want to use an online device. Um, so there, this whole question is basically asking you, which number cent would you use to count the domain, the number of people? Now, if you look at our choices, right, there are four choices. Uh, the only one that makes any sense is choice two, whole numbers. Whole numbers are numbers like zero, one, two, three, and so forth. Right? Those are your whole numbers. And those are numbers that make sense to use when counting people. Integers also include the numbers zero, one, two, three, and so forth. So that's it's kind of, I guess, makes this is a kind of a bogus question. I'm kind of frustrated by this choice because we could totally use integers um, to count the number of people. I guess what they want us to realize or think is that integers are less appropriate because they also include negative numbers. So you have the whole numbers and their negatives. So like 0 and 1 and negative 1 and 2 and negative 2 and so forth. Uh, the thing is that um, rational numbers and integers include whole numbers. Rational numbers, the word rational has the word ratio in it. Rational numbers are the ratios of integers. A and B, where A and B are both integers and, and B is not 0. Right, so we could say that a and b are integers in this fancy way. A comma b are elements of or a part of the group of integers. This is this is cool z signs for integers. So that just means rational numbers include halves and so forth, right? Um, so you get numbers like one half, negative one half, and thirds, and all kinds of uh, ratios. Irrational numbers, numbers like pi and the square root of two and so forth, numbers that can't be written as ratios of integers. Um, here also, I mean, that you can eliminate. You're not going to have an irrational number of people ever. I guess my problem with this question is that uh, rational numbers and integers include whole numbers. If you think of the universe of numbers, right? Let's say we have whole numbers here. Uh, I'm not implying that integers are larger than whole numbers. That's a whole other fun conversation. But I'm saying in this notation that the universe of integers includes the universe of whole numbers. And then rational numbers include whole numbers, integers, and other things as well. If I remember correctly, I think it's Q for rational. So I guess what I'm saying is the argument could be made that integers are a reasonable choice because when you choose integers, you have the ability to also choose whole numbers. And when you choose rational numbers, you can also choose whole numbers. But here, I guess they're aiming for the idea that you wouldn't use, any, you wouldn't use integers because you would never need the negative numbers. And you wouldn't use rational numbers because you would never need fractions. You're not going to count fractions of people. You're not going to count negative people. So the best choice, I suppose, is two, the whole numbers. 
Although, don't get me started on this question, because I could really talk about it for a long time. I'm a little bit mad about choices one and four. Thanks.